When I see a patient with newly diagnosed ovarian cancer, there are, are three important cornerstones of treatment that need to be considered. The first is whether the patient should have primary surgery or neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by interval surgery. The second is choosing the chemotherapy regimen. And the third and most important is the decision whether the patient should have molecularly targeted therapy, either an anti-angiogenic drug or a PARP inhibitor or the combination of both. And this requires molecular testing of the tumor, particularly for a BRCA mutation and the presence of homologous recombination deficiency. When I first see a patient with newly diagnosed uh, ovarian cancer, I will discuss within the multidisciplinary team whether the patient should have primary surgery or neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Primary surgery is the preferential treatment, but it depends very much on the clinical state of the patient and the distribution of disease, because unless the disease can be completely cytoreduced, then we would give neoadjuvant chemotherapy. In that case, a patient would have a biopsy, then undergo three cycles of chemotherapy with interval cytoreductive surgery, and then complete uh, the chemotherapy after that. So that is the key decision point when we first see a patient with potential ovarian cancer. The standard chemotherapy for ovarian cancer is carboplatin and paclitaxel, and in most cases this is given on a three-weekly basis. If it's given after primary surgery, then patients would typically have six cycles of chemotherapy. If the patient is having neoadjuvant chemotherapy, then three cycles of treatment would be given and then a further three cycles after surgery. One of the biggest changes that has occurred is the development of molecular and targeted therapies in the treatment of ovarian cancer. We now have available bevacizumab, which is an anti-angiogenic drug that can be given to patients with advanced ovarian cancer. And this has been shown to improve progression-free survival, uh, but not improve the overall survival. The biggest change has been in patients with a BRCA mutation, who we now know respond very well to a class of drug called PARP inhibitors. These patients are given PARP inhibitors after they complete the chemotherapy phase of treatment and as maintenance for up to two years. And this has been shown to improve not only progression-free survival, but also at seven years, extend overall survival. So it's important now that we measure BRCA mutations in patients who develop ovarian cancer. We know that BRCA mutations exist in about 20% of all patients with high-grade ovarian cancer. And these patients are particularly uh, susceptible to the effect of PARP inhibitors. In addition to this, we also know that a proportion of tumors have homologous recombination deficiency of repair of DNA damage. And this is an important marker for sensitivity to PARP inhibitors in addition to the BRCA mutations. And we know that in this group of patients, if we use a PARP inhibitor, typically given also with bevacizumab, we will see significant improvements in progression-free survival and some improvement in overall survival too. So this means now that we have about half the patients with advanced ovarian cancer who are either uh, carrying a BRCA mutation or have homologous recombination deficiency, and they can benefit from the addition of PARP inhibitors, significantly extending progression-free survival and also improving overall survival. And this has been a very big change in the treatment of advanced ovarian cancer. Music